Salutations, my friends. Hello, my name is Maria. This is Love Party Paint. Today's video is going to be super fantabulous. I am going to teach you how to paint on a shirt. Get onto the canvas. And you can meet me back at the canvas. And you can meet me back at the canvas. Oh, hey. I didn't see you there. Welcome back to my canvas. Okay, so let's go over the supplies that you are going to need. You're going to need some paint. I decided to purchase fabric paint from my local Walmart. Or Liquitex I know makes a, um, a medium that you mix in with acrylic paint to turn it into fabric paint. So that's what you're going to be needing for paint. You're going to be needing um, paint brushes. I recommend using um, like lighter fluffier brushes so using like fluffier brushes and then if you have to do any lines um just using like a liner brush of course like this um the reason i recommend using like uh mop brushes or that kind of thing or even even round brushes are good something that can pick up more paint um obviously a shirt or something to paint on um i'm gonna first test out my design on an old t-shirt i also recommend that not just like going, if, if you have something that you really love and but you want to paint on it, but you've never really painted on a shirt, don't just paint on that item. That's crazy. You're going to end up ruining it if you don't know what the heck you're doing. Um, and then <laughs> I have an old vinyl um, thing, but I would just use something. So what you're going to do is you need something to put in between the layers. Otherwise, what happens is that the paint is going to soak onto the other side of the shirt and you don't want that to happen. So you got to put something in between like like this like this and, um, and also if you're doing a square design or depending on what type of design you want to tape off the size that you want on your shirt I, I will show you how to do that so um good old scotch whatever packaging tape whatever kind of tape this is um it's also great to have and obviously some water to rinse off your brushes and I'm just going to use paper towels today. Usually I use a regular napkin. So that's what you're going to need for our painting today. And I hope you have lots of fun with me and learn how to paint on fabric. The colors you will be needing today are blue, purple, pink, orange, yellow, white, and black. The brush sizes you will be needing are a one inch mop brush, a small liner or a zero round, a half inch oval mop, a six inch scrambler, or just a small scrambler, a two inch round or any small round. First using our large mop brush, or you can use a filbert for this, dipping into our blue paint and using small circular motions, we are going to blend the color down towards the middle of the shirt. And then what you're going to do is dip into your purple paint using the same small circular motions and blending those two colors together. We are going to dip into our pink paint and using the same small circular motions, we are going to blend the purple and the pink together. I was having a little bit of trouble because I mixed in regular acrylic paint, so I decided to go to a smaller brush and using my small oval mop brush, you can also use a small filbert for this or a small round, um, doing the same small circular motions to get the two colors to blend together. And next I am taking the pink and the purple and mixing those two colors together to make a light lavender color and going over that line that it didn't um, blend so well. So now I'm just taking pink and going over that same section again until all of these colors blend seamlessly together. And then taking that light lavender color, I'm working that up towards the um, blue color using the same small circular motions. And so the key here is just to keep going between the two colors until you get a seamless blend. And then after I finished that, I took a large mop brush and blended those two colors together. And now I'm pretty much repeating the same process over again of mixing the pink and the purple to make that light lavender color. 
and using my small oval brush, I'm just repeating the same steps a couple different times to get a nice blend. The reason I'm going over this so many different times, one is because the um, pigment on fabric paint isn't as rich as regular paint, and two, the um, fabric on the shirt actually absorbs the paint in it. So you do have to do this in several steps to be able to get a seamless blend. So what I'm doing now is literally just repeating the steps again, taking the small oval, putting the color down, and then taking the large mop brush and blending those really well together. Taking a mixture of orange and yellow and pink, I made a peachy color to go under the um, the to go under the pink and purple. Now I am working on the bottom part using my small oval mop brush and just um, the yellow paint color. And I'm using the same technique with the small circular motions to get it into the fibers of the shirt. And I'm also pulling the shirt taut because if you do this, if you don't do that, um, your, your paint's gonna look super patchy. You're gonna get little um, globs of paint everywhere and the paint will catch onto the shirt. So it's really important to have a flat surface while you're blending out the color. And I'm working up towards the um, towards the pink and the peach color. And the reason I put down the yellow first is so that by the time I went in with any blue or any other purple that the color wouldn't turn green. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking that same pink color and I'm going along the edge of the yellow. And then on top of that, I am taking the purple and blending that into the pink. All with the same brush, the small oval mop brush. And now I'm dipping in to a mixture of blue and white and I am blending that into the pink and the peach color. I think when you're doing this sort of thing, using a peach color to blend um, blue into yellow or into any color of that nature is really great because you'll get a lot better blend and it won't look very muddy. And now I'm just taking that same oval mop brush and trying to get a really smooth um, gradient in between the two colors, which is really difficult to do on a shirt <laughs> because the um, fabric absorbs so much of the paint that um, it's really hard to get the colors to seamlessly blend. That's why you just you have to keep working in layers. And now I'm taking the scrambler and I'm going on the bottom of the blue with a, with the purple paint and I'm mixing the pink and the purple and the blue um, together. And now I'm going on the bottom of the pink um, with that uh, with a, that orange peach mixture that we made to blend those colors more seamlessly. And I'm using the scrambler brush to do this. Make sure you keep pulling the shirt tight um, so you don't get any lines in the shirt and any cracks in the paint while you're painting it. And it does take longer for fabric paint to dry, so it's in, it's more like working with oil than it is acrylic, I would say, honestly. Um, and just the fact that you have to keep layering it so much. Okay, so right now I'm taking the um, pink color and the scrambler brush and kind of lightly doing small circular motions to make sort of like the appearance of kind of streaky clouds through the yellow. Now taking um, our black paint and a small round brush, I am mapping out where I want the silhouette part of the painting to be. And then using that same brush, I since it was a small area, I just filled it in really quick. But if you wanted, if you were doing this on a bigger area, you could use a smaller um, or a bigger round.
Okay, using that same black paint and a small fan brush, we're gonna take the um, black paint and with upward, upward strokes, you're going to flick your brush just in small little sections to get the appearance of shrubs and grass. And now taking a small liner brush, you're gonna stretch your shirt out a little bit if it's buckling and taking the black pigment and right now I'm working on the palm trees. You're just gonna draw a little trunk and then I tried to use the um, fan brush to do this but it was just way too big. So I switched to a, um, a small round and what you're gonna do is just sort of take your, your brush and do little downwards flicks to give the appearance of the palm tree. It almost looks like a little head of hair in a way, like a little fuzzy ball. And you're gonna start at the bottom and like in a circular motion, just keep making those flicks until it kind of resembles something that looks like a palm tree. And now what I'm doing is taking the same black paint and um, I'm making uh, another palm here on the side and how I usually do this is by um, doing the trunk first and then taking um, a liner brush and making little like leaves that sort of tilt down so you're gonna like pull your brush up and then you're gonna pull it towards the ground. And I tried again to use that same fan brush, but on the shirt for some reason it wasn't working. So I switched to my liner brush and I wanted to make these fun like spiky um, palm tree leaves. So I got pretty precise and detailed here. You don't necessarily have to be that detailed with it. Um, so what I did is I drew out the, like the bulk of the the leaf first and then I took that little liner brush and just kind of made upward flicks on each one of the leaves. And now what I'm doing is I'm working on another part of the palm tree and repeating the same process, making the stem, pulling it down, you know, in a rounded motion towards the ground. And then I wanted to make this look a little more full, so I um, filled it in with more black paint. And then um, my shirt kept buckling, so I had to keep going back in and straightening out the lines. So right now I'm working on a different palm tree, just the stem using the um, same black paint. And now I am taking the black paint and drawing another trunk. And normally if I was painting I on a canvas, I would make the trunk going from the bottom to the top, but that didn't seem to work very well um, on the shirt. So what I'm doing now is doing the palm leaves. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna make about five or four leaves and you're going to do the same thing where you pull the line down towards the bottom and then after you do that and you have something that looks like a star you're going to take your liner brush or your small round and you're going to kind of make these little flicky motions see it almost looks like a feather in a way and you're going to do that to all of the the little leaves that you have and i'm working on this palm some more right now. I wasn't that happy with it, so I just kept reworking it until I was happy with it. And I don't think I was ever really that happy with it, but um, I get a little bit anal sometimes. So I'm just trying to make these look more like palm leaves instead of like a crazy fuzzy cat. <laughs> So doing the same thing, taking our black paint and our small round or your liner brush, um, start making all of the trunks. I made mine going from largest to smallest 
and working from my left into the um, center of the shirt. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So it kind of looks like um, it gives the illusion of, like if there was a road and you were looking down the road and all the palm trees were sort of lining the road. And then um, working from the middle to the other side in the same sort of manner, starting with the smallest trunk and then you know, going from the bottom of the top and sort of relining them because like I remember, like I said, that the shirt sort of eats the pigment. So you're going to have to go over these several times to get a really um, deep black color. And so what I found is that the shirt, it catches on the paint a lot. Um, so it is kind of hard to make really um, straight lines on it or on a shirt with fabric paint or even just even if you were using regular acrylic on it um here i am doing the same thing just making another trunk working from the bottom to the top and then going over it a few times to try to straighten it up and deepen the color one um, we're just gonna kind of carry it up all the way to the top okay now here is what I'm talking about you sort of make all these little leaves um, and it kind of looks like a star so you can put the two on the bottom and then two on the sides and two on the top and then you're gonna take your little round brush or your liner brush on each one and make small downwards flicks so it almost looks like a feather if you've ever made one of those and you want to keep it really light and airy. And so what you're going to do is you're going to repeat this step on each one of the trees. So here we go again with the little star, taking our paint, making the small sort of flicks. And then once the trees get smaller like this, what you're going to do is just make the, the little leaves in the star shape and you're not going to draw the flicks to make them look like a feather because when it gets super small it's way too hard to keep those details like that so just working from you know from the top all the way down towards the middle on each one of these palms so you know this is how you can see what I'm talking about I really didn't put very much detail on these smaller ones I just sort of did the star and then a couple of the little flicks now we're gonna work from the um, the smallest ones up to the largest ones in the middle. My camera cut this part off for some reason. I didn't lower it. There we go, now I just fixed it. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna take your little round and see how it kind of looks like a little star. It looks like I'm sort of straightening a couple of these up and deepening the color. So you're gonna make a little star with like downwards um, flips. And you're just going to do the same to all of the trees. You're going to do two little downward, like half circles. And you're going to work your way from the bottom to the top. So you can kind of see if my head wasn't in the way what I was actually doing. <laughs> and on really small ones, sometimes it's easier just to do four little like half crescent moon guys. 
so you can completely see what I'm doing here. So I start with the two bottom ones and then I go to the top and I do, you know, like a sort of like a crescent half moon shape. And then I take um, the brush and do little, little kind of fuzzies on the bottom part of each one of the um, leaves in a, like in a downwards motion. And you want to kind of keep it rounded. You don't want to just do straight ones. You want to kind of keep the same shape as the leaves. So then I just keep filling them in until it looks full enough and it, and it looks nice. So there's the two flicks, the two at the top, and then it looks like, it sort of looks like a spider right now. <laughs> and then on the bottom half of the, the palm leaf, you're gonna make the little flicks. All the little flicks, and you flicky, flicky, flicky. Till it sort of, like I said, sort of looks like a feather. So if you've ever made a feather, you'll be really good at this. Looks like I'm deepening the color of these, and that's the thing with this. You have to keep working on them until the color is nice and dark. Here I am messing with this tree again. I was just not happy with it. It looks like I'm kind of um, filling it in so the color is really dark. And then that's it. We're all done. You can take off your tape. Um, that's the thing, you should make sure you tape this off. And how I do that is by taking um, a ruler and measuring out the size that I want. And you can use chalk or um, even like a paint marker to um, map out where you want your box. Remember, this is, um, if you're using fabric paint, it does take longer um, to dry than regular acrylic paint does. And if your colors are a little bit dull, uh, don't be afraid to mix in acrylic paint with the fabric paint because it will um, make the paint more opaque. So I'll see you next week. Adios.